quicksand is actually pretty cool. If you're 11, your greatest fear is probably stepping in a patch of quicksand and meeting your demise, but don't worry, you don't need to be scared. Pick all the mushrooms you like, you're fine. The only people who should be scared of quicksand are characters in old movies, because <laughs> a lot of them die there, like uh, Exhibit A, B, C, D, E, F, G. There are, there are plenty more examples than this, but I do think you get it by now. It was actually so common that 3% of 60s movies featured some appearance of quicksand. About 31,000 movies were released during that time, which means you can probably assume the line Oh yes quicksand, we need quicksand, quicksand is love, quicksand is life, was probably uttered at about 930 different meetings. I think the fact writers like this quote so, so very much really comes down to three reasons. Quicksand is very easy to make, you don't need any special effects or big budgets, no, you just kindly tell the actor or actress to lower their head below the moist and you're done. Anyone can get stuck in quicksand, if the writers are tired of a character, just chuck them in quicksand. This is especially useful if you have a main character it's so nice they couldn't actually kill anyone, but there are still some people left that just really deserve to die. Other characters can also look at the person drowning and choose to help them or not, which is always a very cool way to show who deep down is just an asshole. Because of this, a lot of scenes involving quicksand are pretty... Uh, or let's say very similar to each other. There's a villain running from a threat. It could be a tiger, it could be a muscular man, it doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is that they're running and they're scared and then they fall into quicksand. They always say some corny line like, oh my jeez Rick, this is quicksand, I, I'm not gonna make it, so that no audience member is left thinking that that's Maybe some other type of sand that you maybe won't drown in. Then the evil sidekick will stretch out their hand to try and pull them up, but oh no, the hand slip and the villain drowns anyway. End of scene and applause. Real quicksand doesn't work like that though. Before searching it up, I thought it was just a type of soil, like you'd have a dirt, clay, sand, like normal slow sand, and then quicksand. I thought it was just one in the gang. But no, quicksand can be any type of soil, which means it can appear basically anywhere. No character is safe or will ever be safe from quicksand. The only criteria is that it has to be mixed with the right amount of water, which means you could create your own quicksand if you would feel like it. And there are tons of videos on YouTube of people doing that. You know, maybe, maybe you want to make a trap for a neighbor you really hate. That's that's up to you. In nature, this mix usually appears when water is flowing below the soil, so it looks like a solid, but. As soon as you step into it, you will start to sink. But you won't really drown like they do in the movies. The average density of quicksand is 2 grams per cubic centimeter, while humans only have 1, aka a lot less, which means you should only sink about halfway into it. It's also rare for quicksand to be deeper than a meter anyway, so unless the character is below 4 feet tall and made out of galvanized titanium, there should be no way for them to actually drown. But real quicksand is still dangerous, you know, what if you get stuck to your waist and then the tides change, how, how about that? Or what if you dive into quicksand and then your head gets stuck, that's not great either. Or maybe the quicksand patch was actually a trap that your psychotic neighbor made that you just fell right into. These are all times when quicksand can actually be very lethal. 
but let's say you actually do get stuck in your neighbor's quicksand trap, what should you do then? First of all, no sudden moves, okay? Struggling will only make you sink further, so just take a deep breath and relax. And also scream very, very loudly in case someone is nearby. Then you need to lean backwards and let your legs slowly float to the top while wiggling them a bit to create space. When you're all the way at the top, grab onto something solid like a rock or a root and crawl like hell. Basically, do everything they do in Dora and the Lost City of Gold and and you'll be fine, you'll survive. So, in terms of escaping quicksand, some movies, aka Dora the Explorer, are pretty decent with how you would do so, but in reality, it would still take a lot longer than just one scene. Being pulled straight out of quicksand at only one centimeter per second would require the same force as lifting a full-sized Volvo, so in Baywatch, when they rescue one of the guys using uh, some surfboards and the power of friendship, you can assume that would probably not uh, work in real life. But the main topic of the video isn't Baywatch, it's still how different quicksand is in movies to it in real life. And on that front, I think it would maybe be better to get a, a real-time example. That's why I booted up Minecraft on my second monitor. Okay, so uh, this is my, my test person. He's called MJ the Cool One. Uh, please don't even ask why. Uh, he only sells me Curse of Vanishing, so that's, that's obviously why he will be representing uh, the villain today. But as you can see, this is the movie Quicksand, where he just falls down and he's just gone. There's no trace of him. He, he's just, he's dead down there, okay? He's gone. And here we have Jaquaniel, uh, who's about to fall into the real quicksand. And as you can see, he sinks down to his waist, and then he's stuck there, he can't get up. But he's still fine, you know? That, when he turns red, that's an indicator uh, that he's fine. But I think that's, that's kind of that about quicksand. Uh, but you know, now that I'm in Minecraft and all, I, I may as well speedrun the game. I don't know if you knew this, but I'm actually a a, a part-time YouTuber and full-time Minecraft speedrunner. So this is this is all just very very easy stuff for me. Kind of my thing when I speedrun is just insane luck. Like I don't know if you've seen uh, Deadpool. Deadpool 2, where the girl is just very lucky all the time, and that's, that's kind of her superpower. That's basically me, uh, but with Minecraft speedrunning. And the bad thing about that is that, you know the website speedrunning.com? They never ever accept my runs. I, I keep submitting them, I beat the record by like 5 minutes, and and then they, they I get an email back saying that uh, it's not a valid run because I cheated or something. And I just feel like it's very disgusting to, to even say such a thing. I feel like, you know, people deserve to see what, what greatness uh, in Minecraft is. And I can show them that. But, but you know, if they never submit, if my runs aren't there, how are people supposed to know how good you can be at Minecraft? Okay, uh, anyway, that's this time. Beat the world record again. Hopefully, speedrun.com will submit this run. I think I beat the world record by like, what, five, mi six minutes? Yeah, okay, that's. I'm, I'm pretty pleased with 